Hi, I'm Johnny Nomega of Nomega Recording Studios, and we're in, of course, Nomega Recording Studios, the corner of my office, actually. You see the microwave behind me, for those late night writing sessions. You see my printers here for all the music I write and have to print out. So you can guess what we're talking about today. Writing, and writing a great song. Now, I can't go over everything that you need to know about writing in one video, but I will give you some amazing tips that should make you a better writer. Whether you're the beginner, the intermediate, or the guy that has written a million songs, you can benefit today. Now, while pundit, should I have my keyboard with me or a guitar to give you some musical examples? But then there will be those critics that said that it only applied to the music that I was teaching it. So instead, I decided to give you some tips. I do have some other videos that go into specific genres of music. But today, we're just going to get some great tips that's going to help you. And the first tip is what to write about. I get people that say, Nomega, you're a published writer. You've been a published artist since the age of 10. I'm not there yet. What do I write about? And I have a simple answer. Write about what you're passionate about. Write about things that you care about. If you like being in love, write about being in love. If you like riding your bike, write about riding your bike. Write about things you're passionate about. Write about things you know about. Write about things you love. And it'll come across very genuine. If they're not genuine, then people will not relate to your music as well. They won't like your music as well. And they won't connect you to your music as well. And if you don't know about it, it doesn't mean don't write about it. I'm not saying don't write about it, but let the artist know that you, you don't know about it. If you don't know about love, let them know that this is an ideal love or that you're dreaming about being in love or you want to be in love and this is what you think it's about. And they'll relate to it a lot more. Next, keep it simple. Keep it simple. A lot of beginning writers, they want to use a lot of big words or get a lot of words into a small area. They want to fit 19 words into three beats. Cut it back. Keep it short and simple, or short and sweet, as I like to say. Normally, the fewer words, the better the singer can sing it, which means the song will come off better. Not saying make it elementary, but you don't have to be a college professor to understand most songs. And if you go to your favorite song, it's probably very simple. I like Red Hot Chili Peppers. One of my favorite songs, the, one of the lead lines is, or I really don't want to feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand what that song is about. So keep it short and simple. Next, consider timing. Don't put those 19 words into three beats. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Consider your timing. Realize a singer has to sing this. Actually, once you have finished writing the song, get a singer. If you're not a singer, and a lot of writers aren't singers, and find a producer you like working with. Go into the studio, and normally your publisher pays for this. Check out the video on how publishing works and how royalties work. Check out that video, and then go into why your publisher pays for these things. But go into the studio, have them sing the song, then you'll know where you need to tweak things, what's hard for them to pronounce, what's hard for them to run through. Because if it's hard for your studio singer or studio producer to wrap music and words around it and harmonies around it, it's going to be very hard for that publisher to sell your music. So go into the studio, produce it, and make changes according to what's there. But also understand structure. And I don't mean that typical 12 or 16 bar verse, 8 bar hook, verse hook, bridge hook. It's a day. That's great. That's made a lot of people, including myself, a lot of money. But understand structure. Understand that if you drop a bar somewhere, that is not the worst thing in the world. Sometimes I will intentionally write a 15 bar verse, that way there can be some musical introduction for a bar into the hook of the bridge. But understand how that works and why that works. Next, who are you writing for? Understand if you're writing for yourself, it doesn't matter how good the song is, doesn't matter if your friends like it, doesn't matter if the world likes it, you're writing for you. If you're writing for you, you can throw everything I just told you out of the window and just have fun. And that is very cool. But for those of you that are writing to sell a song, write a hit for your band, sell music to a major label, know that is your purpose. Which means you don't have to overwrite, you don't have to underwrite, but write a good song. Write a simple song that's going to be catchy, that's going to be one of those songs that people say, I hate this song, but I can't get it out of my head. And therefore, they buy it, they download it, they purchase it, 
you make money. People want to buy those type of songs. The record label want to buy those type of songs. So know who you're writing for. So don't be stubborn if a producer has to change something or ask you to change something or you have to move something or if a singer is having a difficult time singing it and you have to reword something or the timing of something so that it works. Don't take it personal. It is a business. Recognize a hit. Not everything you will write will be a hit. I know that my hit factor is maybe 80% after being in the business over a decade, but that's not most people's. And even I have to acknowledge that 20% of what I write will never be a hit. It'll never be a top 10, it'll never hit billboard. So what I do is I recognize this 20% and no one ever hits. <laughs> after it's produced in the studio, I hear a singer on it, I have the music for it, I shelf it. Because I realize it's not that. Now, if I have an old buddy or someone I've worked with, that for a long time, I may let them hear it and they may like it, pick it up, buy it, and use it for their own purposes. But recognize the hit. Recognize that, hey, I put a lot of work into this, but it's not a hit. And finally, have fun. If you're stressing about every line, if you're stressing about how limericks works or the tips Nomega just gave me, you ought to stress about that because I'm giving you some great tips. But anything outside of that, if you're stressing about it, you normally will get writer's block. It's going to be hard for you to write. Stress in your life makes it difficult for you to be creative. And this goes with all forms of music. Not just writers, but producers. Anything being creative, if you're stressing, it normally is very difficult for you to complete it. So if you're stressing, it's normally extremely difficult for you to complete anything. So remember, have fun. If you're smiling, the world is smiling with you. If you're dancing, the world is dancing with you because it comes through your writing. Thanks. I'm Johnny Nomega. And remember... Dreams can't come true.